your skin, Big Bandish. Hey guys, what's up? It's My Face Story here, and today I'm here to talk to you guys all about the ancient Chinese tradition of face mapping. You guys have probably heard of face mapping before. I always thought that it was hogwash because that's what I was taught, that that didn't mean anything, and that it wasn't true. However, there are two different sides when it comes to medicine. There's going to be the American or the Western side, and there's going to be the Eastern side. And the Western side, from what I've experienced at least, when it comes to acne or skin problems, is more about just prescribing a topical or prescribing some kind of treatment, not really looking further or deeper into it and having you go on your way. The Eastern side of medicine, Chinese traditional medicine especially, has a theory that everything inside of our body is connected. You know, if there's something off, it's going to have a domino effect and show up somewhere else. And that is something that I can get on board with. That's something I really believe in. I know if I'm tired, I'm gonna show it with bags under my eyes and not so bright skin. If I'm stressed, I'm probably gonna have a pimple. So I do believe in these imbalances and them showing up as other skin problems, but they take it to a deeper level. They take it to hormones, liver, kidney, and heart, and sectioning off different parts of your face to be able to identify internally what's going on. Obviously, this is just a general guideline. It's not gonna work for everyone. There's so many different factors and causes when it comes to acne. It could be product irritation, pollution, soap, or like your laundry detergent. So those are different like external factors to consider first before considering this. And it could just be like you're using the wrong products for your skin. Like they're not balancing your skin's pH. You know, it could be so many different things. The ancient like tradition of face mapping is obviously a technique to heal your skin, but your body as well. If you always break out on your chin, that's probably going to be hormonal, and then you can find natural ways to deal with your hormones that way. So you're helping to readjust the inside of your body and the outside. I know it sounds like sort of crazy and mysterious, but I think that there is kind of a deeper truth in that, that our external body is connected to our internal body in a way our skin can be like a mirror of what's going on in the inside. This is kind of how Chinese medicine views this too. They really believe, again, that it's sort of a domino effect. And you know, if there's something physically wrong inside, it could show up physically outside, no matter what that is, no matter if it's your liver, heart, kidneys. And again, these certain areas will tell you which it is and what is going on. They use like a couple different philosophies. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but you guys can go ahead and look them up if you'd like. They use the yin and yang. They use the five elements, and I don't know say the last one, the meridian channels, I think. Those are a couple different philosophies that they use that are centered around their traditional medicine. I think that what Western medicine fails to realize is that we're all connected. Like we are a living organism on this earth, every organism, we are connected to the earth. Our bodies are connected to the inside of us and that is connected to our soul. We are all connected. I think that Western medicine just fails to realize that and kind of fix or prevent the problem before it starts. They kind of just want to put a bandaid on it and have you go on your way instead of focusing on your health, your overall well-being, and obviously your skin. Does face mapping actually work for acne? Again, there's a million causes, but if you have determined all external factors, there's nothing you're putting on your face at all, you're not using any irritating like lotion, body wash, shampoo even, you could have pomade acne, no external factors, I would definitely consider looking into face mapping because it can point you in the right direction. It is kind of a general guideline of, you know, what could possibly be happening. There are several different reasons for each area of your face, which we're gonna get into. But I found it really important and a really useful tool and it kind of opened me up to some stuff that was going on inside my body. Let's get into like the certain regions and what each region says about what's going on internally. The forehead has to do with digestion, digestion, digestion. Other reasons are obviously gut health, poor diet, toxin buildup, stress, and it could also be due to a, an irregular sleep schedule. Since the forehead is a sign of the digestion system, try cleaning up your diet, see if that works. Add more leafy greens. Focus on your gut health, bone broth, probiotics, kombucha. Kombucha can really help. And again, like digestive enzymes. Make sure you're also getting enough sleep because Everything can upset your gut balance. If you're not getting enough sleep, the foods that you're eating, stress, those can all upset your gut, which in turn upset gut, upset forehead. So make sure that you are getting enough sleep. 
and whatever they recommend. What do they recommend? Like eight hours? Yeah. Get yourself a good six to eight hours of sleep. So between the brows is the next area. And this area signifies problems in your liver. So if you find yourself constantly breaking out right in here, that's probably going to be due to a slow congested liver. And what usually causes this is over drinking, like alcohol, over consumption of alcohol, or just consumption of alcohol in general. I find if I have a couple of drinks, I break out right there, like, like that. It can also be smoking. Obviously, not only is that gonna affect your liver because your liver is what is going to cleanse out, you know, all the toxins and everything. It's also going to dehydrate you, which is going to probably affect your overall skin. This can also have to do with food allergies. So if you find yourself breaking out in little tiny bumps that kind of look like a rash, it could be that you have food allergies. So I would try, you know, the main food allergies, sugar, corn, gluten, dairy. Try cutting those out and see if that doesn't clear up or at least try one at a time. You know, it might be kind of hard just to go like full force, but try one at a time. So the next area is the temples right here. And I used to break out here all the time and I never really knew why. So this has to do with de dehydration, dehydration, dehydration. And it also has to do with stress, excess oil production and poor lymphatic circulation. Make sure that for the lymphatic circulation, what clears out your lymphatic system is drinking tons of water. Obviously, that's what everyone's gonna tell you ever about acne is just to drink water and everything will be fine. To exercise or go on a brisk walk and giving yourself a lymphatic drainage massage, which is just, you know, pulling down, following down this way. You can even get behind the ears too. So just do that for a couple minutes to help stimulate that flow and kind of help your body out. The next area, which again is like a super weird area, but people do break out here. I broke out here, used to break out here all the time. And that is right under your eyes, right here. And I'm doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Main reason people break out right there is because they're tired and they're rubbing their eyes, which kind of go hand in hand. Cause if you're tired, you're probably gonna go. Ah, 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 ah. So constantly rubbing your eyes, lack of sleep. That's what's gonna make you tired. Obviously get sleep. Rule number one, keep your hands off your face, don't touch your face, and obviously make sure you're drinking enough water because that's what everyone is always gonna say. And another like little external factor is not removing your eye makeup enough or not removing it completely. Next is the nose. And this area has to do with blood pressure, blood circulation. It's basically a lot of it is about the heart. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have heart problems or heart disease, but it is something, you know, that you could get looked at, looked into. Also has to do with constipation. <laughs> I know it's funny. Make sure you go in the bathroom. Bloating, indigestion, and salt intake, which is make sure you're just not eating too much salt. Acne on the nose, if it is related to indigestion, constipation, those sorts of things. I don't know why I've been recommending this so much, but digestive enzymes, they've helped me a lot. Try those, see if they help you. I'll help your body break down food again. Blood pressure, poor circulation, those sorts of things. That's something obviously you are going to have to work out yourself, talk to a doctor about, because I have never <laughs> experienced that, I don't think. I might have it, who knows? But that is something definitely to talk to your doctor about if you're getting them right here and it won't go away. I'm not talking about blackheads. I'm talking about like inflammatory acne, like you're getting cysts right here. So around the mouth right here and around like these smile lines, this is obviously going to be hormonal. It's going to be like irregular bowels, again, constipation. A lot of this, if you guys haven't realized, has to do with gut health and has to do with digestion. And I think that's really where a lot of this stuff starts. And I never thought I had problems with gut health because I always thought that meant that, you know, you're overweight and I've never had problems with my weight. So I always assumed, you know, oh, I'm, I'm skinny, I'm lean, I don't have problems with my gut, I'm fine, I can eat whatever. But that's not necessarily always the case. It could be something that you've been dealing with your whole life and because of that, you don't even realize that you have the problem. Again, irregular bowels and spicy or hot food. You can try adding hormonal balance. You could try adding avocados, coconut oil. You can also try using adaptogens, things like maca or ashwanda. Those are really helpful balancing your hormones. And try laying off like the spicy and hot foods, see if that helps and eat more cooling foods. So eat like, 
cucumber, broccoli, zucchini, those sorts of things and see if that helps or not. I know that I literally almost always break out around here if I have curry. So that totally makes sense to me because I make my curry so spicy and so greasy and it's so good, but I know every time I break out somewhere around here. So that is very interesting. And the reason why that is, is because when you actually eat spicy or hot foods, it increases the temperature in this area, which actually makes it a more habitable breeding ground for bacteria, because they like the warmth. So there you go. So the cheeks, the cheeks have two different reasons. So there's the right cheek, and then there's the left cheek. The right cheek has to do with allergies, number one, again, stomach problems too much sugar, stress. For allergies, it could be internal, external, so make sure that you're not using any irritating skincare products, like exfoliators, don't overuse AHAs, BHAs, I personally have that experience, not good. Internally, it could be like a food allergy, or it could be allergy to a pollutant, or something like that. So, you know, try to see if certain things do affect your skin. For food allergies, again, you could try cutting out sugar, gluten, corn, dairy, any of those. Of course, make sure to not stress, because stress causes all of these. <laughs> and stress is gonna mess up your gut, and your gut's gonna mess up your face, and big circle. Left cheek is a little different. It does have to do mainly with gut. It also has to do with overeating, malabsorption of nutrients, stress, stomach problems, and poor air quality or pollution. Because it is directly related to malabsorption of nutrients, that means that your body is, you might be dealing with a case like I have. For me, I can pinpoint my breakouts, my left cheek, for example. So a lot of this is hyperpigmentation, but I went through some pretty crazy breakouts with my left cheek. And I know that this, for me, is connected to malnutrient absorption. And that is one of the reasons, you know, for left cheek acne. Right cheek is different. Right cheek's pretty good. Left cheek, malnutrient absorption. And what this really made me realize was that for the past few years, unknowingly, just because I was used to it, I've been dealing with slight IBS. I literally, I have to go. Like when I have to go, I have to go. And it's all of a sudden and <laughs> it usually is right after I eat. And you think about it, if you're going that frequently and you're going right after you eat, your body's not having really enough time to properly absorb the nutrients and to give you energy. And I found during the times where I was eating poorly, I wasn't having like steady energy throughout the day. I found that I would crash, that I would get so tired and achy and I just couldn't even move. And to think that it was a gut problem, which is kind of crazy, Western medicine would never identify it as that. They would just give me Accutane or give me Retin-A or give me whatever and send me on my way. So for me, it's been really helpful because it hasn't just helped to heal my skin, it's helped to heal my insides and my energy and I just feel way better. And so with that, with the malnutrient absorption, you know, when I found out about causes of left cheek acne, of gut health and those things, you know, I was like, uh, I don't think I have any of that, but I started focusing on my gut health anyways. I started drinking celery juice, which has micronutrients in it. I started drinking like a shot of apple cider vinegar and water, which has probiotics and prebiotics. And I started taking probiotic every day and I started taking digestive enzymes. And what those do are they help to slow down the food being dissolved in your system so that your body has more time to absorb the nutrients before you go, which is pretty cool. That was my experience so far. And I feel like it, you know, it's really helped. So for that, you know, make sure you're doing probiotics, digestive enzymes, collagen, and lots of fiber. That will all help. You can even add L-glutamine into your diet if you feel like you have like leaky gut or something like that. Those are things to keep in mind. Also, poor air quality can be an underlying factor if you live in a city with a lot of smog, pollution, something like that. Make sure you invest in a good air filter in your home. I personally use, I have like the pink Himalayan salt lamp. Those actually purify the air really, really well. And they use like the vibrations from the crystals, which is pretty cool. And especially make sure to, <laughs> I don't wanna say like clean, Make sure that you are using an air purifier if you have pets because they have a lot of dander and a lot of pet dirt. So you don't want that to be like sitting on your skin all the time. Trust me, I have like two big furry buddy dogs and they just shed like crazy. So I always have to clean. In conclusion, these are more general guidelines. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a liver problem or you have a heart problem or anything like that, but it could mean that something else in your body is off and it is showing up 
in the form of acne. You know, if you experience acne on your cheek, try digestive help. If you experience it around your mouth, try avoiding spicy food. Just, all you can do is try things and see what happens. We all have different bodies. Our skin all reacts differently to different things. So that's all I got to say. It's a great technique to learn about your body, about the inner workings and see how that directly translates to your skin. So guys, that's all I have for today. I feel like I just talked for so long. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe down below to the Acne channel, and I will be back with a video next week. All right, bye.